just tell us at the moment with him. So thank you, our God, for the evening. It's all the spirit is so wonderful to come into your presence together. It is so delightful to share time together, spend time together, and uh, see how you move, what you speak, uh, through uh, whoever you want to speak, and what way do you you want to manifest through different individuals. So this evening is for you. And it, we are just delighted to spend time with you. We our, our pleasure is to please you. So we want to go as you guide us this evening. And thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the joy that you give us. That everlasting peace, complete peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your help. Thank you for what you have already done. As you have guided us in these prayers, and as you have brought us to this wonderful experience, being in connection with, and staying in connection, being, and being as being in connection with God, with you, it was you prompting us when we were all were far away still. Preparing <laughs> the word of sin, but, uh, but now we are in fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for that. And so this evening is as you want, Holy Spirit, every person here, it's not that any person is now so wonderful. And well, we are wonderful through you, through Jesus Christ, what Jesus has done. But it's not about titles. Every person is here now a junior <laughs> and you are the senior. So as you want, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. Move as you want, how you want. It is. We just go by what you decide and what you will. And it, I know Holy Spirit, Lord, and it will be so wonderful. So I will give you thanks, Evan Prior. Prior, we even go further because it's the, you are going to get it anyway. And Jesus is going to be glorified. We are going to glorify God. So I'm just, and we are just going to give it beforehand already to you. So thank you, our God. Amen, amen. In the name of Jesus, our dear Lord. So, hello, rest of the people who just joined opening prayer we had, and now we will continue the first prayer session. So, Agos, you can go ahead. Yes, our first Bible reading will be taken from First Samuel chapter 17, verses 51 to 53, and it says, Then David ran and stood over the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of its sheath, and killed him, and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled, and the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on their way from Shirim as far as Gath and Ekron. And the people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. And our second reading is from Second Kings chapter twelve, verses five to six, and then thirteen to fourteen. 2 Kings chapter 12, verses 5 to 6, and 13 to 14. And it says, Let every priest receive the money from one of the treasurers, then use it to repair whatever damage is found in the temple. But by the 23rd year of King Joash, the priest had not yet repaired the temple. Verses 13 and 14. The money brought into the temple was not spent for making silver basins weak tremors, sprinkling bowls, trumpet or any other articles of gold or silver for the temple of the Lord. It was paid to the workers who used it to repair the temple. Amen. So in this in this passage, to give a bit of context, the temple of God had been destroyed and the king had made arrangement for it to be repaired. But however, during the years that during the years the resources given were not used to actually made were, were not used to make to for the repairment for the work to be made, but rather it was used for the priests for their own pleasures, for their own need. So basically the temp the, the money that was meant for the temple of God was was used for their own pleasure. And in to bring the restoration of the temple of God, the king had to remind them 
And so based on this, you're going to pray for restoration into the body of Christ. And restoration can be anything. It can be prayer life. It can be what your reading of the word. It can be intercession. It can be consecration. It can be anything. It can be anything at all. And we're just going to, uh, we're just going to pray that the Holy Ghost will rekindle the fire in our hearts, that our minds, our souls, everything in us will turn back to him. And any restoration, any repairment in the body of Christ, in our own selves that needs to be done, that we may turn back to the Lord that he will do it so let's begin to pray Lord we thank you for this evening thank you Lord that you will always guide us back to you oh God Lord as you have said your word Lord we pray for a mercy to pray for your forgiveness wherever the Lord instead of using every resource that Lord you're giving unto us instead of using it for the Lord of using it for your kingdom Lord pray you restore everything and Lord repair everything and Lord give us the, the Lord that burns for you and burns for you and Lord give us the of priorities everything our mind our rights Lord give us to know it was it always knowing that yeah, eternal eternity is the goal that you are the goal. Everything is for the glory. Everything, everything is for the kingdom. And nothing else, oh God. That everything, nothing compares to you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we are not prepared, Lord. We know and we trust and have faith. But the Lord indeed will do it. In Jesus' name that we have prayed. Amen. How he opens the scriptures, how he opens our heart that when by this the scripture is not a letter just coming there moving from one page to another but it is the word of God that mm, goes inside that heart and shepherds in and does everything that needed to be done needs to be done in that heart so our heart is at the moment in the church and stable <laughs> I guess we are greatly started to this subject was we have been many times in the matter of the heart the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart because from the heart issues or come brought all the issues of life so it's about the heart it's about the heart it's about the heart and again we will read about the heart and let's first read our anger scripture holy spirit has something from there it's interesting to see what he brings from here as we read the second scripture somewhat after what this so familiar place verse 7 uh, first Samuel 17 51 to 53 so 51 mm. therefore david ran and stood upon the philistine and took his sword and threw it out of the sheet thereof and slew him and cut off his head there which and when the philistine saw their champion was dead he they fled mm. and the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until they got down come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron I will even stop here we don't need the rest part for, for this moment we will just use the word especially the verse 51 and the first part of 52 we know from the story they were the mighty men of Israel who were, uh, when they wanted tough time, time, tough guy and tough time came, they were chickens. They were old well, they so mighty, so powerful. They had been gym five times a week and they were big men, big muscles, testosterone everywhere. But when <laughs> this small guy comes, this who is standing sheep, not lifting up heavy rocks, not cutting, cutting wood every day, but this shepherd who is <laughs> carrying this staff of maybe two kilograms along stuff, some 
out a British still lightweight stuff. So that David was on the man of big stage. And when these big men heard even a bigger man to shout, their heart failed them completely. Because they trust was on, on their own strength. So when a bigger strength came, they just couldn't do anything against it. But then came this, <laughs> the, mm, not as this, all the people were in, uh, let's say, middle class, middle heavy, heavy NFC, obviously rest in this heavy, champ, heavy, heavy, weight champion came, Goliath. And then this lightweight champ, <laughs> champion came, but he wasn't a champion by his physical mm, maneuvers. He was champion in the spirit. And that is our mandate. And when this lightweight started to breeze to others that why does this heavyweight speak here this way? They were like, well, how can you speak this? You are lightweight. You are you are even up below our class. So well, how can you speak these things? You are arrogant. Naturally, that is completely true. If a person from a lightweight, like even a champion from that league, tries to fight, fight the heavy heavyweight, heavy heavyweight champion who might be waiting, I don't know even the numbers. I have never watched boxing, but maybe the person can weight 40 kilograms more. So the person can almost double the weight of the previous series. Not not quite, but almost. So uh, the number ma- of muscle there is in the heavyweight more, there, it, there is just no chance for the lightweight to win. So naturally speaking, the brothers were completely correct, but they forget one dimension. It's not about the muscle of the flesh. It's about, it's about the muscle of the spirit, the muscle of the heart. So here we read even verse, verse 50 says, so David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and with the stone. So we read, I read the story how the lightweight was with a single stroke, with single hit, the heavyweight. So we see that this was not human strength. This was not human ability, human ability. David hasn't been in the wilderness just shooting stones <laughs> to this, this place and to this tree and then this tree and then this tree and then this one wolf and then this tree day after day. No, he hasn't been doing that. Yeah, he has been using his sling before. He knew how to use it, but it wasn't his ability. David was fighting with the heart that was panting after God, with heart whose strength was not trusting in his flesh in his sling. His heart was trusting in the Almighty God. That is where Agos, our dear sister, started us. That fire in the heart that pants after God, that fire who burn, which burns, and when you see the heavyweight blaspheming God, you from the lightweight will say, or even up below the lightweight, you, your spirit will be kindled. The fire in you will say that the, I cannot hear this, I cannot bear this. So this is the mm, introduction to what we are going to read now. But it, a nice how, funny thing about here, I'm, I have no idea what we are going to look at next or what we are going to speak next, but the Holy Spirit does, so this will be really, really interesting. So let's go to our second scripture, and Second Chronicles, that being Second Chronicles 15, verses 12 to 17. So you see, again, this is the same scripture we read last time, but uh, let's see what the Holy Spirit has, because he has something more from the same passage. It's good that he knows. I don't know what he's going to say, what we are going to say, so he knows. So let's read Second Chronicles 15, 12 to 17. And they entered in to a covenant, seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. That whosoever would not seek the Lord of all, Lord God of Israel should be put to that, whether small or great, whether man or woman or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with corners. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sown with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. And also concerning Marka, the mother of Asa, him, he removed her from being queen, because she had made an idol in a crow, and Asa cut down to her idol <laughs> and stamped it and burned it at the brook Gidron. That the high places were not taken away of, out, out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. This is not David we are reading about, but we are still reading about a an, an situation where another man had a perfect heart toward God, because the scripture is inspired by the Spirit of God. So, Holy Spirit, through prophet inspired and wrote down here that the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. That means there was another man whose heart was perfect toward God, just like David's. So this is not an issue or situation that can be happen only to one one chosen one. This happened years and years, decades and decades, even hundreds of years afterwards, David, to Asa. If that can happen at the time, that time, at David's time, at this time, it can happen today. And this is to be every man's portion, a heart perfect all his days or her days heart that seeks God every day is perfect every day. That heart that is perfect every day does not come into a situation, a temptation, some struggle or affliction or some abundance and start to moan about the affliction or start to forget God in that abundance. A heart that is perfect toward God 
all the day, all days, is every day focused on God perfectly, completely. The motivation at the bottom of the heart is God. That is why David could prevail against the Philistine, the champion, the heavyweight champion. I don't know if he could qualify even to a heavyweight these days. He was, if he was three meters high <laughs> and full of muscles, so how does that man weigh like 200 kilograms? How can you fight against a giant? But because it wasn't David's strength that he fought with, it was the spirit of God, the same, the self-same spirit. That that self-same spirit is in you and me this evening, but is our heart perfect toward him this evening? Now, imagine yourself, wherever you are sitting, <laughs> if you are driving like my dear wife at the moment, imagine Jesus coming to the room where you are at him. Or if you're driving, sitting at the passenger seat right now, come into your room with his glory, with his splendor. Let's say that you could be able to sit because he, he, his spirit will give you strength. He will sit next to you and he will ask you, is your heart at the moment perfect toward me? And when you now see, you look at his him, his glory, the white, wider than snow, his feet as mm, shining bronze, his shining bronze, shining bronze work, his eyes as a flames of fire. But you see that love from him. You see that holiness from him. You see that also passing sovereignty of God before you. You see that one who died at the cross, the lamb that was slain and lives forevermore. You know that <laughs> it is complete. Now this moment is that it is completely impossible to lie. Now if you if you lie now, you will most probably die. Your spirit will immediately leave your body. What will you say to him? Will you mm -hmm. throw yourself down before him in gladness, in worship? My Lord, you are my everything. You are my my heart belongs to you. I have a nose no space in my heart for that strength of the flesh, for that boasting of being in the middle class, mid middle heavyweight of the weight series. I don't have anything in my heart to take your place. Or is the 49% of something else taking your heart? Notice that you have still with 55%, so you would be in business terms the owner of the <laughs> business because you have most of the stocks. Or are you own owning 65%, even 85 That is pretty, pretty much already. Somebody at 90, that is really 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 much 95 someone oh that is that is almost excellent that is uh, and someone 99 well that is that is almost perfect no but if if you and me don't have a hundred percent for jesus that we can say with hundred percent confidence at this very second that yes my heart is perfect toward you then it's time to pray another kind of prayer not to mm, fall down at his feet thanking him worshiping him fall down at his feet at his feet yes but in repentance in asking for forgiveness. There is no lying before him. There is no single person who can lie and pass, go by it, survive from it. But everything belongs to him. So our first prayer, this is similar our first prayer point. Either whatever your case is, you you identify, you have identified yourself already. If you cannot say in that, when I started to say this thing, happily straight away with all the concept, yes, I'm okay with God, then you will now spend your time in some way as we will pray sometime in worshiping him. But if you are doubting, that already means that your, th your heart is not correct with him. So it it's time to put that in correct. And Holy Spirit will show you everything. And you're more prob most probably you also know the things that are taking those stocks of your heart to some other things than, that they don't, don't all don't belong to Jesus. So we have a moment of prayer. And this we will do now differently. <laughs> this will be so interesting. This is your time now with God. Let's spend some, some minutes. But I will even mute myself. It's time to... God, this is your personal time. No one is even listening. Every person puts yourself right, God whatever your status. So a couple of minutes, you and God, just you and your maker, you and your Jesus before you. Oh yes, glory be to God. Just that was just a moment there, yeah. But now, do, do you know why we do this? And this was something different than why we had done in the time. When you go to battle now, let's imagine David's situation, because now we are going to go to the, then like the prayer combat after this. But before you go to an, any battle, you must make sure that you have water always with you. If you have an army of one, even million, million of souls, there's completely ready, completely armed. You have, have you will have a fight of battle of some days, some weeks, some months. You have everyone ready, everything so trained for the fight. But if you are lacking water, your army will die, especially in a hot temperature, and even more especially when the people are fighting and consuming so much liquid by perspiring, sweating, and so on. Your people, all that mighty army you have, all that mighty strength that there is, it will die in, let's say, four days. So that all the strength is vain if the spirit is not there. If the water of the spirit, the fellowship of the spirit is not there and is kept at the most 
most important matter. It doesn't matter how much you evangelize. It doesn't matter how much you read the Bible. It doesn't matter how much you how much you pray just by praying. It doesn't matter what you do if the Spirit of God, if the water of the Spirit is not there. Therefore, we focus time and time again in the heart, ma- heart, matter of the heart, the heart that is the heart itself, to make sure that everyone's heart is perfect toward God. And sometimes Holy Spirit, even we leave a completely dedicated to Him, Holy Spirit will point out those. So, Johanny, do you see that pride lingering in your heart? Do you see that that this thing, what I have said to you, do this thing for me, it has taken too much of your attention, too much stocks from you that are now n- not in the hand of Jesus, but actually for that thing. And that is a time of breaking down again. Break that broken spirit and broken and contrite heart. That is perfect heart to us. So therefore we come again to this because that is the point to start the combat. So now, when we have done it, let's read the, that's verse 16 again. So verse 16. When the matter of the heart was crude, when the water was sufficient, just like remember, David found the stones in water in the brew. So when we have now the sufficient water, <laughs> something happens. Verse 16. And also concerning Marga, the mother of Asa the king. Oh no, this is a mother now. There is a family issue. He removed her from being weed because she had made an idol in a grove. Well, we can read from this mother that her heart wasn't perfect from God. She had even made an idol, something that she worshipped and made other also to worship before and above the only true God. Well, this is an issue. Mother in some way has birthed this king, has raised him up, has educated him, taught him many things. But now this mother, this role mother should be, had given her heart to another thing for showing example to others. And especially when the mother was related to being as even queen of the person. So notice she wasn't queen because she, she just was a person there. She was queen because of Asa. Asa was king. So relation, Asa's place as a king of Israel positioned Marka had to have authority, to have influence over the some people. So so is every one of our lives. People next to us, close to us, they're re- uh, looking at our position, our heart, heart toward God. If I now, as, as, as I'm speaking right now, if from this place I will go this evening to meet some who will be my friends and we go to city center, they are drinking some alcohol and they will be mm, uh, spe- well, intoxicated from the alcohol and then shouting some dirty things at the city center of Kobe. Well, people would look, Akosua would, let's say Akosua would have forgotten to buy some groceries and would be late evening shopping at Kuopio city center if at that any shop would be open there and Akosua would see uh, Juhani from the prayer meeting and Juhani was leading the pray of the matter of the heart, perfect heart toward God all his days of Asa. And then Agasa will be looking at what is going on and why these people are shouting these dirty things. And then seeing me there, at first looking at it, well, this cannot be Johanny, some person just looking like him. Then looking like, is this Johanny with those guys? Like, how, what is going on? How, how can he, what, is he preaching the gospel? He's probably preaching the gospel. Then. But then he's, she sees that I'm not preaching the gospel at all. I'm just spending time with them. I'm relating to them. I'm in a not family relationship, but I'm relating to them. So my in, I am, so to say, giving them influence by what I present, but in effect, it's robbing my influence completely in the side of Agosua. Agosua will be said, and now, Johanny, uh, Agosua will go to say to Andrew, and, and I, I will be discussed through the Bible, that's Johanny. What it has happened? This is not correct. The Bible says this and this and this and this. You cannot be mm, speaking, in, speaking in prayer meeting about this kind of it's just at the same time you are you are doing this kind of things. This is not correct. So Asa was in the situation. Asa's mother, so close to him, had made an idol in a grove. And because Asa was in a position of authority, her mother had influence over the people. When they looked at Asa, they at the same time will at uh, Asa at the throne of king will also see at the same view the queen probably at her right side. When that happens, the credibility of Asa will drop down drastically because stating how can this person keep at the same time, an idol worshiper next to next to him. How are your relationships? Are there these people who are sitting at the right side of your seat, your throne? Jesus at, is at the throne. Well, let's say that you will be sitting, sitting, and now there will be some person at your right hand. Is that person mm. as holy as God is? Is that place reserved only for those who worship God with true heart all their days, all their days? Is there possibility that there is a queen who professes to be a ruler? 
good person in, in Israel that actually has placed and grow an idol in your grow to deceive people and lure people out of the fellowship and of the worship of true God. The only right thing to do is what Asa did. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burned it off at the Pru Gitran. The idol couldn't stay because of the presence of the true God, God was there. Any, any, any person close to you, sitting at your right hand, having an idol, the idol shouldn't stay there. It is impossible for the idol of Dakon to stay at the presence of the Ark of the Covenant, as in the old Testament, there is a story about this case. It is impossible. Uh, the devil cannot stand in the presence of true God. If the presence of true God is in your life, idol cannot stand there high-headed. Dagon lost his head and then uh, like all his limbs. That, But it didn't have happen automatically in Asa's life. Asa did it wasn't a king and then she said that, well, the, um, the idol will be just set, be set by itself on fire and it will just be bound, bowed the next day and then it will be, the powders will <laughs> fly by themselves, by the wind to the proof. Notice, it was the proof again. It was the water again. But it was Asa's job and mission to cut down her idol. We are not speaking about even at sinners probably at this moment. We are speaking about the church. Be people going to church because Israel was church, representing the church of modern day. But still in that church was this queen with her idol. And in that church, Asa, the man with perfect heart, because that is the only position you can do these things, cut down the idol of her mother, even the mother of faith, stamped it and burn it at the Pruk Gitran. Every idol there is in the church, we are going to come against those because every, that idol, Asa's heart was perfect and many turned to God, but many didn't because there was an idol in the house of the king, turning people away from the God at the same time. This is the same thing. Church is the house of the king. The, any idol there is in the people's life, it will give an example to others not to dedicate their whole life to God. A revival is a stage where the 100% of stocks belong to God. There are no idols taking the stocks. Not even 1%. Not in taking glory from God. Not in taking the affection from heart. So this is not right now about like what our life purification. We prayed it already. Now is that the church needs to be purified. And now I'm not even speaking globally, globally. We are uh, seeing that God is moving. But now we are, I'm speaking about the fellowships you and I are, where, where you personally attend. God God, the Holy Spirit, is giving us a mission to cut down idols. Take them down. Do you want to see revival? Do you want to see my power and move on the churches? I have called you like Asa was called to cut down the idols. Do you know the idol wasn't falling down or upon the Ark of the Covenant before it? Asa was sent. Asa had the burning heart to cut down the idol. My power will manifest in the church, but it is conditioned. Are you up to the task? Are you willing? Are you you willing and obedient to see the enemy's power in my church go down. If you accept the enemy's force in my church, you yourself are local and are not up to the task. But I am calling them who are willing, who are willing even to cut down idols of the mother, spiritual mother, spiritual father, even the people you honor the most. If there is idol, that doesn't deserve to be there. That place of the heart belongs only to me. Uh -huh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we will go through that in play prayer. We will go in prayer it's time to cut down idols. It's wood cutting time. If it's wood, well, if it's some other material, it is time to destroy them. Whatever, and this is not just for this evening, just for a moment of prayer. This is a play where we start. This is the play where it's dedicated. It will manifest where we go and we, what we do. And we will continue. When we see idols in the churches we go, in the fellowship we go, we will not just politely say that everyone has his own opinions and, uh, well, I'm just living kindly towards God, but every person can do what he or she wills. It's not up to me. No, Holy Spirit just called me and you. We will cut down the idols. Or we will not. There is no outway. This is no gray area. It's time to cut down the idols because the glory of God will move. His power will move. He's going to move. He's going to manifest, as he said. <laughs> but it regards cutting down of idols. Revival is a work. Revival is a work so that his power will move. And we are. We need to see the movement outside the church also, because. but it first needs to start in the church. The 
idols need to be taken first from the church so that they can be taken away from outside the church. It cannot go out outside the church if the idols are still in the church. How what are you going to save the people outside the church from idols that are you in the church at the same time? No. Save them what you are saved from. We save them what we are saved from. When we personally are revived, the idols are not in our lives. It's time to get them away from the church. It's time to revive the church. And we are at that space. So let's go to prayer. This is interesting. Holy Spirit, thank you. Lord, we come before you. Thank you for the introduction of this and so on. And we cut the Yara Lord, we will see your power to move in the church. You have condition, you have condition, not upon our labor, not upon our might, but upon your move, upon your sarra, to your rocoma, yara to coma, arata coro como. And Lord, we know, we notice, we notice, we see there are many idols, many idols, many idols. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we are not those people who will say that just put them under the mattress, under the mattress, next generation will have made it be the board of elders. We look at it. Well, this is not your duty. And I don't you know that the analogy says that, well, this is person, I think, or this person, I know this person is quite mouthy, he's able to speak and going to speak so much and going to raise and how much because of saying this. Me, you are not looking under men. God, we answer to your calling, yes. We answer to your calling, yes. We answer to your calling, yes. Come on, you're come, my yara, come. See, because we want to see your movement. We want to see your movement. We want to see your movement. It's not about us. It's about you. You want to manifest. Who are we to say that? No, we need, we deserve our, if we are not uh, accepting the, the cutting down of those things, we ourselves should be cut off because it's not about us. It's about you. It's about you. It's about your glory, your holiness. Every day, how much more the church of God, the church of living God. There are many idols in my church, but few are willing to cut them down to stand in under burden. I have called you to destroy those things because they are hindering my glory to manifest. I want to move. Do you think that it's not that I want to move? If you say that that would be blasphemy, but I want to move. I want people to be saved. I have said that in my word. I am delighted I, that every person should turn away from the iniquities, from the wickedness unto the living God. I will to move. I will move. It is up to the church. Will the church answer to the call? Will you answer to the call? I am putting upon you and I am now speaking to you I know there are many many saints in the world but I am now speaking to you because you are gathered in my name here so my job my miss I want my church to be awake I want to be revived I have now sent you as a fire branch tied together and a door set between your four tails and that you will burn you will burn you will burn every idol every other wherever you go so that my fire my divine glory will manifest in the church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we answer the call. We answer the call. We answer the call. Pair us together. Pair us together as a family of God. Family of God. And set that divine fire between our days, between others, that wherever we go and we go running foxes, rather, you know that foxes will not walk when they have fire on their tails. They will die doing the burning. They will die doing the burning. At least burn and much of their days. We are ready to take damage. We are ready to die for your work. Lord, tie us together and set us on fire, fire that cannot be quenched. And it will burn every idol, every idol, every idol, every idol, every idol, every idol. Because in Ephesus, Father, you did this already. You and you will be judged in many ways. You will be told as condemning and judgmental because you will be so on fire and you will burn everything out among your way. You will be judged, you will be condemned, you will be said that you are too hard, you are too hard. But I have called you, I have set you on fire.
fire. Is it your fault that you will burn? Is it your fault when there is a fire upon your tail? Just run, just run, just run, just run. As to many places, as to many areas, with my fire, with my fire. And with, but remember, 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 when they were persecuted, when apostles were persecuted, even in prison, they returned under their own company, own company. I have set you into this company. You have to set on fire. So return, so return, so return. And that fire will be rekindled, rekindled, rekindled. Do you remember what happened? It's an act of the apostles. They came again to their own company and they brought the issue to all the people. And as they prayed, the place was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they and prayed to it with boldness. I have called you, I sent you forth. I will also revitalize you, re energize you to go again, to go again, to go again with boldness, with boldness. So go, so go, so go, so go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory how you are. Let the Holy Spirit thank you. We thank you, thank you, even prayer. Thank you. You are wonderful. You are amazing. You are wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. You did it. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. We give you all the glory to you. Also, thank you for how you will lead the rest of the evening. We give you all the glory and praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. All the glory. Amen. Amen. Interesting things. Holy Spirit is wonderful. Ah, let's, uh, we have one scripture that we will read. Mm, let's read Revelation 2 and 20. <laughs> I have no idea what's there, but let's read it and see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So we will read that place and uh, pray regarding still that as Spirit leads us. So Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, it says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou hast suffered that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrifice and to idols. That was a bad mom. Bad, bad, bad woman. Okay. Holy Spirit, please help help us a moment still more. We are going to need your help praying about this, this subject as, as your God. Lord, we will not let any Jezebel, any Jezebel, any Jezebel, they control, they control, they control. Because that woman, that woman that was seducing, seducing and teaching. Why? Because she had entitled a prophet I know they got in fivefold ministry. Call, not just prophesying, but prophet, this prophet, this prophet, this prophet, this prophet, this prophet. And that was teaching, teaching, that woman, that woman, that woman was teaching. Rakomo, Father, we will go in your name that even people who are called by names, by titles, but who are preaching the doctrines, and not just preaching, but actually teaching the doctrines of they will, we will cut them down. We will suffer not because it was about suffering. It wasn't about that Holy Spirit will be moving. It was about that the church suffer this continue, suffer this continue. If they suffer this continue, they knew there was something bro, but they didn't dare to move. Lord, we are not like Church of Dea Daira, according to this matter. But Lord, we repent. We 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 set our strategy as you have called us. Our strategy is as you have set us for this evening. We will not suffer. We will not suffer that who called herself, not by ourselves, but boasting be a big, big way herself. I am a prophetess. Do you see this prophecy upon you? Prophecy upon you here and there. Revelation. This kind of thing. I see the spirit. This is happening. This is happening. We will not receive self-proclaimed prophetess, self-proclaimed apostles, self-proclaimed pastors, self-proclaimed evangelists, self-proclaimed teachers. But we will, just like another church was doing, we will, we will will co judge the people. We will see if they are true. We will, will prove them and found, find them wanting. That's all that they anymore. The seduction going on. It will stop, will stop, will stop, will stop. Lord, guide Show us that they will be taken down, taken down, taken down. And the influence of the devil will be taken away from this. Holy Spirit, Jesus, move to us, move to us. Move to us, purify us, just purify us, just purify us, just purify us, just use us, use us, use us, move to us. Amu komayara, ngoro pomama, no matter how big the name is, no matter how big the influence of the person is, if that is a prophetess of Jezebel, if that prophetess is a Jezebel, it he or she needs to be taken down, kamara, nutru komom, anara, kamomoyo, in the name of Jesus, we declare spirit of warfare against you people, you, David, you know that we are against you, we do know we are causing damage in your kingdom this month. You know that that moment of spirit
spiritual are of short catapults are shot at the place where those people are manifesting. We know that you will try to heal us, but it is written in the word of God that the gates of hell shall not be against the church. We come against you and these people you are will be taken down because glory your church, glory your church, glory your church will emerge, will emerge. And that revival that already is the right side in individuals like it will spread in church. It will spread and then you will not do anything and you can not do anything against it. Come on your rock home. Lord, your power will go through the churches. It will liberate them. It will go through them. We will continue in the fire and every person, everything, even people spreading things, fear intoxication around them, around poisoning around them, they will be taken away so that the clear and pure water of the Spirit of God will flow, will flow, will flow and it will bring, it will bring revival, 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 revival and massive people will say, Parakoma, they will come to you, they will come to you, Lord. What you will do, you will do, we believe you, we believe you, we believe you, come around your right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are wonderful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. I ask that you we can you move once more, move once more, do it again. You are so wonderful. You are doing this. We are just juniors in the circle. You are the senior. We are just following you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are so wonderful. Jesus, all the glory to you. So you are amazing, 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 amazing. Amen. So we prayed that point. Now we will continue. This part was longer than expected, but Holy Spirit is the governor of the <laughs> meeting. So what he wants to do, let he will he will do it. And we, we truly want him to move. So glory be to God. So let's move on. <laughs> he has still more things to do. So our dear brother uh, Emmanuel can be praying profoundly a lot uh, along the way. So do you want to lead us the next in the prayer then? Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Oh, we thank God for the last session that was led. It was very, very like, almost to continue in the same spirit. I just just occurred to me in my heart that for a while we have not been the last meeting. We had it also occurred to me again that we've not been taking testimony. So, but if anybody has testimony, we can also reach out to Pastor Johanny so that we can help testify of what God is doing in our midst. So, I thank God for I thank God for His mercy. I thank God for you know growth in the spirit. I thank God because when it is blessing, it's always a blessing to be in the midst of brethren and praying like this. And it has brought me into higher, a better work with God. And I thank God for the blessing. I give God all the glory. So tonight we will continue in our prayer. In this prayer, I'll be very very fast as much as I possible i won't take so much i want us to read first samuel chapter 17 in verse 50, 51 the bible said therefore david ran in verse first samuel 17 verse 51 the bible said therefore david ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheep thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead he fled and the men of israel and of judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistine until that come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. and the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to shareim even unto god and unto the crown. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philippines and they spoiled their men. So we continue again with a supporting scripture from the book of First Kings chapter 1. And tonight, the continuation of the last prayer session I led one time, yes, the last week and over um, two weeks ago. And we saw that we blasted our trumpet against satanic abutios and the spirit of the Antichrist. We blasted our trumpet against satanic abutios in religious, busy, political, academic, financial institutions across the group, globe. And we were praying prayers and the Holy Spirit was revealing to to several of us at the help of the Spirit of God. And so in First Samuel, in First Kings chapter one, I want to just point out a few things and then we will pray. In First Samuel chapter one, from, uh, we saw the First Samuel chapter one is the story of the failed attempt or the attempt of a particular individual to hijack the throne that was not given to him. One of the sons of David he was not promised to be king. Neither was he appointed king by by David, but he told himself that he would be king, and by that declaration by that intention he raised up men to begin to blast a trumpet ahead of him no, rather he raised up men to run ahead of him and they were announcing him as king and they were announcing him as king and we saw by the help of the holy spirit you know so many things that god raised up you know and indeed indeed god intervened in the story we saw that we saw that the divine and timely intervention it has to be timely it had to be timely otherwise if it had taken more than one or two days before the intervention maybe it would have been too late there wouldn't have been any intervention but we saw that it had to be timely these people understood what was happening. The, 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 the wife of the mother of King Solomon, right, who later became king, you know, and the prophet, Prophet Nathan, they were people whose antenna and whose ear was on ground, and they understood the times, just like the sons of Ephrathah that knew, knew what to do at that appointed time. They knew what to do. Otherwise, if they did not know what to do, the kingdom would have been hijacked, and probably there would have been a very terrible, terrible coup, and people would have died, and the throne would have been established in the Antiochus from this. What is 
God trying to tell us on this episode chapter one. We'll pick some scriptures and then we'll pray with them. See, God is trying to tell us that we must know what is happening. We must know what is happening. We must be people who understand what is happening in the world today. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. They don't understand. They don't understand. They are honorable men are punished. They are void of knowledge. They just live as though everything is normal. They move with the world, with the, with the wind of the world. They move with the you know happiness of the world as do. They don't see the walking of the spirit of the Antichrist. It's only for those who are sensitive, only for those who are watching, only for those who are watching men. There are many believers in the body of Christ. They don't know that they ought to be on ground, ought to be on guard, ought to know what is happening. Because if you don't know what is happening, even if you have people under you, you will just lead them astray. If you need God to people under you who you should keep as leader, you will just lead them astray because you are not climbing at the watch over and looking out to see what is happening. And so a man came, Nathan came to Solomon, Nathan came to, Nathan the prophet came to Solomon's mother and in verse 11 and he said, have you not heard that Adodin, Adonijah, the son of Haggit has become king? Have you not heard? And the same thing God is telling us today, are you not seeing that the enemy is enthroning himself over the affairs of this world, over the our, our school system, our political system and all systems of this world? And this is where the Lord told us to go and preach the gospel. The enemy is laying stronghold, building fortifications upon fortification, happening, and the believers are not aware of, are not aware of. And God is saying, are you not seeing that these are the same places I sent you to go preach the gospel? Preach the gospel. We said, go into the, all the world and preach the gospel. And we saw last time, you know, after praying, and the Holy Spirit also said that we also ought to be ambassadors of the kingdom, not just that we pray. Because when we look at the story, because like I said, just be very fast as much as I can. When we look at the story, we see that there were three different scenarios. We saw Adonijah rose up to be king. And then we saw that there were people who are we call intercessors. And the last time we saw God commission, commissioning many, you know, in this, in our prayer meeting, many of us to go out and fulfill our office and fulfill our uh, our gifts, our calling, our, our our mission. And people were, a lot of people were released into several offices. And so these people stood in their office. It's one thing for God to commission you and it's another thing for you to stand in your office. And so the prophet Nathan was in his office. He defend the people that something was wrong. And when they took it, the next thing they did, they went into the presence of the king. They are rich. He told Solomon, the mother of Solomon what to do. He told the mother of Solomon what to do. And as, as the mother of Solomon stepped in to the, but Bathsheba stepped into the king's palace, you know, and while he was speaking, Nathan also had arranged to come in and he came in and added his voice. This is a thing, a symbolism of intercession. intercession. We come into the presence of God and we say, God, this ought not to be so. This ought not to be so. They went to meet the king. They did not have the power to go and confront Adonijah and the troop and his own people, but they had the king. So they said, he also come into his presence. They come into the presence of the king and fall prostrate like what Bathsheba did. The Bible said in verse 15 that she fell down, bowed down, prostrating herself before the king. Just as we are doing in this place, we fall prostrate before God and say, God, God, we cry before him and say, Father, it ought not to be so. The devil should not hijack the souls of men. These are the people God has given to us. You know, we need to stand in the gap. We need to pray because before every great move of God, there are people who enter into the presence of the king and are standing and interceding for the land. These people are not coming after because of the selfish reasons. They came before the king David because they knew that if the land was hijacked by Adonijah, it would be a reign of darkness. And so we know what is happening that if the enemy can successfully fulfill all this agenda, if the enemy can successfully fulfill all the agenda of hell in every institution of this world, brethren, it is we are fighting for our survival. It's our survival. And I like what Nathan the prophet told her. Nathan the prophet told her something. He said, Go in, he said, go and meet the king. Go and meet the king. Because if you don't meet the king, if you don't go, he said you are fighting for your life because they will make your son, you and your son will be born to criminals. That's what Nathan told Bathsheba. He said, Go in and stand in the gap because you are not doing it for yourself, all right? You are doing it for, for yourself and you are doing it for you know you and your children right you are doing it to preserve the life otherwise you will be killed your children will be killed you'll be called criminal and that was what she did and so we are not just doing it for ourselves it is for our it's, rather it is for the preservation of ourselves and the body of Christ it's not just we are just we are not just doing it because if the schools are being hijacked by, by by the kingdoms of darkness she was not just doing it like a, a ceremonial stuff she was doing it for the hope for her children for her land for the for the people of the land for the for the for her sons for herself otherwise they will be termed criminals and they will be slaughtered and we are not just doing this for sure we are praying and standing in the gap for the land for the body of Christ because if our children are fed with the wrong ideology with the wrong information it will damage them it will not just damage them it will damage a lot of things a lot of people and our the next generation will not will be damaged that's just the, that's just the word and so we are standing as in our rightful office we enter into the presence of the king as soon as they entered and they interceded what did David did David told them told them what to do he gave them an instruction and the Bible said that David called Bathsheba, right? 
and he called Nathan and he told them, he told them, he said, call Zadok the priest, call Nathan, call Bernard the son of Jehuda. He said, and take, take Solomon, right? Ride him, put him upon the, the mule, my own mule, right? And take him to Gihon, Gihon. And uh, Gihon is a place of over, uh, I, 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 mean, I don't want to be wrong, but let, I'll talk about it later. And then he said, take him, Zadok the priest and Nathan and anoint him over Israel, all right? And blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet and blast the trumpet. And what is God trying to tell us? When they entered into the presence of David, they interceded. And now what did David do? David is a type of God, for example. And David said, go, go around the land and begin to blast the trumpet, begin to ride around the land. And God is telling us that we will not just, we will not just come here to pray. We are going to go into the world. We are going to go with a body. We are going to go like desperate men. We are going to go around the land and blast the trumpet of the gospel. We have interceded. Now we go into the land and blast the trumpet. The enemy may be speaking, may be running around with the wrong ideology and the wrong message. They may be fulfilling their ministry, but our ministry is greater than the ministry of the enemy. And we are to go into the land and preach the gospel. And with the right heart, with the right heart, we are to be people with a heart, uh, the body, the right body. Not to be people who are just running without a message. You know, there are people just running without a message. They don't understand what is happening in the world today. They don't even know the message to preach. There are so many preachers today are not even preaching Christ. But we are to go with the body in our hearts. We have the message. These people were going with the trumpet. They were not just going and shouting around like Ad Adonijah and his people. Adonijah and his people were just running around with horses and chariots and declaring themselves as king. They were just going. They had no trumpet. Like as was pointed the last meeting. They had no trumpet. But we have a trumpet and we are to blast that trumpet with signs following. We preach the gospel. God confirms our word with signs following. And people are liberated from sin, from darkness, from the grip of hell. And we have a testimony because the trumpet confirms the testimony. The, the trumpet confirms the message. It brings forth the manifestation of the spirit. Our voice is louder than the voice. Even though the enemy have a lot of number, a lot of people are in their calm. They have all the gadgets, all the technology. They are the one in charge of the financial sector. They are the one in charge of the tech world. They are the one that are rooted at the foundation of those places. We have the louder. We have the trumpet. We have the trumpet. We have the voice of God. And our voice will be louder than their voice no matter what, how we are. We will preach the gospel. We will preach the gospel. We will ride around with the help of the Spirit. We go with the help of the Holy Ghost and souls will be like Britain. The elect will come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's what God wants us to pray about. I'll just raise two prayer points and then we'll, we'll be done. So the first prayer point, these men entered into the presence of the king. And what did they do? They fell prostrate. They fell prostrate. Bathsheba fell prostrate. She took a position that was not casual. She took a position that was a position of an intercessor. And they said, have you not heard? This man had made himself king in the land. We stand before God tonight. We take a post, a position out down. And we call upon God and say, Father, Father, we cry and stand and pray as intercessor and say, this must not happen. The enemy will not be able to hijack the spirit of the Antichrist. We will not be able to put these people into perpetual darkness. Lord, we, we cry for the body of Christ. We cry for those who are sinners all over the world that they may come into the knowledge of the truth. That every ideology that is being preached out, being pushed out by darkness and is putting men in complete hibernation. People are blinded by with a strange, even the body of Christ, blinded with a strange doctrine, the doctrine of Jezebel, the doctrine of Balaam, that the eyes of the understanding of the body of Christ will be opened. And that those who have been tied down with the spirit of witchcraft, sorcery, all kinds of strange spirit that have been released in Babylon, all kinds of Babylonian spirit and Babylonian trumpeters, that their voices will be silent, that God will stand tonight. Again, let us pray. Let us begin to pray. Pray the way the Holy Spirit is leading you. We pray for the body of Christ. We pray for this world. That they will come to the knowledge of the truth. That every ideology will be brought down. Every ideology of hell that has been, is being propagated in our schools, in our financial systems, in our world, in the country, in the continent. Lord, as we blast our trumpet, as we stand in the gap here tonight, Spirit of the living God. Lord, may something happen. May, may they be brought down. They, may they not prevail. The Bible said that we build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail. Oh, that the trumpet and the forerunners of hell will be stopped. If we win the battle in the place in the, from the spirit, we will win physically. 
i will gama rahasela kapara kata kata ya eterne temere tile barakuza vakata ndele bahaya kratene velia temere atai kata mikura kata ya shine your light upon us shine your light upon us that we may be delivered of God as there was a deliverance in the time of of, of Solomon of God and then raha tele maha remene retene ria ndesika rebele kusakra tida vida kata leme handi remina tai Pray, 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 to see, to see the way Jesus sees. It is a call. 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 Not hard and to Bashaba. It's a call to the presence of the King. It is a call to prayer. It is a call to intercession. It is a call to enter the holy of the holies and to enter and to forge and to cry to to God for the souls of men that the body of Christ will awake. We can arise. We will not be lured by a wrong doctrine. We will not be lured. We are the spirit of the Antichrist. We will not be able to deceive and deceive the church and deceive the world. Ekapera hatalia rebele tene merakaya rapento shikura kata katele miriandi remene ne mashata mabiriandi tene merakaya. We dare not take it with levity. We dare not take it with carelessness. We it is an urgent. It is an urgent call. Nathan acted with urgency. It is an urgent cry. It is an urgent call. Meku mesai kafari ande kariata minha. Rebele to sega rakatebi ande karasta bakai. Menti lo se kura kataika. Rebele to sikuru to fiketeli Maria ande kiza. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. Amen. My last prayer point, I'm going to take my last prayer point. Thank you very much. I, I saw somebody said, Gihon is a boasting fort, a rapid stream, a rapid thank you. And so it's just like when Jesus cried and said on that last day, he said, out of your bed shall flow rivers of living water. So we take it to the point. We take the gospel message. We take Christ. We enthrone him king. And then by the by the, by the the gushing forth of the rivers of living water and by the help of the spirit, it's the spirit of the living God that can help us fulfill the message. And Christ will be enthroned when there is the, 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 the boasting forth of the rivers of living waters. He will be enthroned in that place where the Spirit of God is, is has free full course. And so these people could have just gone and taken Solomon. See, these people could have just taken Solomon and said, no, he's, in, he's, he's the right king. Without consulting David, they did not say David was, was too old. They went to meet him. They could have just taken Solomon and run around and nothing would have happened. Because why? David understood the secret of the trumpet. And that was why David told them, he said, when you go, take a trumpet. Don't just be running around and arguing with people. Jesus is Lord. It is, it is Jesus that is Lord. You are arguing with people. You are arguing with people. You go from place place they are saying all kinds of things and you you are contributing by arguing you are not preaching the gospel you are not sounding the trumpet you are just arguing he is in the bible is in the holy book that was what t.l osborne was doing he came to india for two years came as missionary he was arguing for two years he had no soul he didn't win any soul he said him and his wife came back and they were discouraged they came back home and they were crying they said they did not see one soul he wrote it in their book and he preached it also in the sermons he wrote it in the book called so with soul, with soul, soul winning you know they didn't win one soul they will preach to the mohammedians they will preach to the Buddha. Buddhists, the Buddhists will bring their own Bible. They went without a trumpet. They were trying to enthrone Jesus as king without a trumpet. And so they were preaching and preaching. Sometimes their face would turn red. They would speak. From morning to night, nobody, nobody would ask what must I do to be saved without a trumpet. And when they came back, T.L. Osborne said he, he, he told himself he was tired. So they came back to America and luckily for them, they saw a man of God, which was uh, you know, uh, William Braham. Uh, they, they were fortunate to get to this meeting and you know they saw him preaching and demonstrating all kinds of signs and wonders. And, and he was saying, this man has this thing. I want this thing. This man has this. This is what I want. And the man decided that he will not go back to India without a trumpet. And that man entered into the presence of the king and he began to cry. He began to pray. He began to intercede. He began to cry. God, I want this dimension too. I want this dimension. I have seen all kinds of signs. I have seen miracles. I have seen this. I want it too. He passed there. He locked the door and told his wife not to open the door. And he was praying and fasting and praying and fasting. He didn't eat. He didn't drink. He went into a coma because he understood that life was worthless. If he could not, if he could not enthrone Christ, 
Christ. Like, what, what, what was he living for? And one day he encountered Christ. And he came out of that room with power. And he went back to India. He went back to India, him and his wife. And when they went back to India, they organized crusades. While they were marching to the crusade ground, the Indians were kept coming with all their all their magics and they thought they could spoil the crusade. He said as soon as he was marching, all those that were demonstrating all kinds of powers, they began to collapse. They began to fall. Their powers began to fail. They had not seen that dimension. He preached on that crusade ground. Souls were won. People ran out and gave their life to Christ. There was a transformation because that man went back with a trumpet. He went back. It was his have your right, let him ride on the moon, but go with the trumpets. And what is God telling us tonight? We need to, we need to preach the gospel. We need to preach the gospel. We need to preach the gospel. You know, it is not enough for us to pray. Oh, I, I read about John G. Lake. John G. Lake will give himself to fasting and prayers. He wrote in his diary, he said he will give himself to long fasting and prayer for the souls of men, for the salvation. I was asking, why was this man praying? Why don't he just go and preach? But it is a prerequisite. That man needed a trumpet. So he said, I will give myself to long fasting and prayer for souls. You don't go to the, you don't preaching is not Preaching is not just an activity. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God. It is a, it is a, it, it is that trumpet that has the ability to usher men into the kingdom. If properly done, the gospel will liberate even the chiefest of sinners. It doesn't matter how many demons has possessed that person. The gospel is power. And so the man will pray until God give him a, a trumpet. And so after prayer, he will begin to have crusades, miracle crusades, gospel crusades here and there. And souls will be one deliverances. You don't see those things. If you have not entered the presence of the king and God gave that man a trumpet. What are we praying about tonight? The Bible said they went and they enthroned Solomon. And as soon as they blasted the trumpet, what did the Bible say in the latter part? He said as soon as they blasted the trumpet, oh, the other people were eating, they were dining, they were rejoicing in their own camp. And a man, Joab, heard the voice of the trumpet. Say, what is that? What is that? What is that? He heard the voice of the trumpet. And as soon as they heard one of them packed up, they packed up and they ran away. As soon as they heard the voice of the trumpet in verse 40, 40 he said they finished when they heard, heard the trumpet they ran away because why the, the trumpet is power the trumpet is power when demons hear the sound of the trumpet when they hear the blast of the trumpet they run away they run away when we go forth preaching the gospel in our suburbs in our city in our towns our villages and the gospel preached with power demons will flee when we go forth as lights in our place of work in our nations we don't look at ourselves as small but we see ourselves as ambassadors of the kingdom people coming bringing forth lights those institutions will be shaped by the power of God those sectors will be shaped by the power of God. You can preach and, and the president gets get converted, gets saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. And when the president is saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, the whole nation, the key, the door is open already. You can preach the gospel and somebody, the Holy Spirit is powerful. I speak by the Spirit of God tonight. You can preach the gospel and that your publication you write and you think nobody will nobody will be, be, be imparted by it. It can get into the office of the prime minister and the prime minister will say, get me the person who wrote this. Who is this person? This book hit something in my heart. Who wrote this? And they will call for you and they will say, Your wisdom, what wisdom do we need? We need we need this wisdom, this same wisdom we see. And then God will set you in positions that you never thought of. And then you will you will blast your trumpets, and the nation will be saved. We blast your trumpet, and that city will be saved. We blast your trumpets. Because why? It is the spirit of the living God. Greater is he. The spirit of the living God is great, is greater than the world. And the spirit of the living God is the one that amplifies our message. All we need to do, like David told them to do, carry Jesus. Ha carry him and begin to speak begin to blast your trumpet that he is king of kings and lord of lords can we begin to cry and say father help us to fulfill the great commission help us to be the light of the world help us to fulfill the assignment of heaven help us to enthrone Jesus and to dethrone the sweet of antichrist as we preach the gospel brethren this is our last we point open your mouth and begin to pray help me God to blast my trumpet the trumpet to have placed in my hands. Help me to blast my trumpet. Help me to blast that trumpet, the trumpet of the gospel, the message of the gospel that is able to liberate men, liberate sinners, liberate all oh, those who have been bound by the work of the spirit of the Antichrist. As we preach, the heart of men will be saved and liberated. I cannot so cool God is raising up an army that will be marching on God. Father, help me be part of this entire army. Help me be part of the and to take my city and to take my community and to blast my trumpet over the nation 
source of the world. May I not look at myself so small. May I not look at my impact so small. Me kose krahata ya raba rete demi rizika ta ya ligradi ze veri tu sifuna matikati ya tini bika tu sika rika tini birika ta ya maleto saka tu vene ne meria ya me rutu ze meteli ya na ma brethren it is a call it is a call it is a call let us ride furiously we will ride upon the mule of the Lord furiously oh the gospel the gospel the gospel we will ride upon this mule and with a trumpet in our hand we will begin to utter into the atmosphere the mighty words of the spirit that has the ability to change the dynamics of nations that has the ability to reconfigure the heart of men that has the ability to reshape the political atmosphere of nations that has the ability to bring down every bar that has been erected over the heart of men the gospel is the mighty thundering drum roll of the invisible army of God moving on a march Oh, Makatele Kusekaya, as we speak, as we blast our trumpet, angels will begin to walk with us. He said the Lord was walking with them, confirming their words with signs following. Nekuru Kufia and the Kai Kateli and the Keriza Maya, Neletus and Bekataya, Ai Katono Mea and the Kai Kanabira Kumakateli and the Karia Katoya, and Meliana Saiku Mekai Kasuma Rakai Kateli and Makaria. We we get to that depth. We we get to that dimension, oh God. Our impact will be resounding. Thank you, Father. In Jesus. Mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise God. I hand over Pastor Yohan. If glory be to God, we will soon move to the last prayers of the evening. Prior to that, uh, as Emmanuel, my brother, asked for testimonies. So, if any person I haven't seen in chat any message that any would share testimony after me. So, if you have, just send a message still or raise your hand. I I will tell the testimony as one one testimony as I tell told prior or brought to the chat that you remember all who were present of all who are listened to the recording how last that of last time as the holy spirit spoke that he's going to mm, set people to positions to work in the mm, different positions different ways where god wants us i mean the first he started with us like uh, us, wants us to move on to function so he has started to do this this is not i, I actually not when i was starting to share this i remember that it's not that this has been happening to some some people I know. Uh, but this, for example, today, well, you all witnessed what the Holy Spirit, how he moved moved this evening prior prior the, in the one session. That these are manifestations of it. When we come to God, when He speaks to us here, He He works, and He. That remember that last prayer meeting we had. He spoke that every one of us, and he started all again with the matter of the heart, and then it continued to that mm, setting us to the different position and do his work. And that is by his anointing, his his increasing. But that increasing doesn't work unless there is this fellowship with the Holy Spirit, as well fellowship. So this is just as the what that was the second prayer session. Then that that is a testimony to all of us of what God has spoken just two weeks prior that he's moving showing it to us because all of us have not the same possibility to share things but what god says is true and it will as he said happen to all of us as we continue to be faithful as we continue to fellowship as we keep fellowshipping with the holy spirit so god is good god is excellent he's wonderful thank you god so yes from that no one has raised his hands so we will move to last prayers of the evening so andrew you can continue Samuel 17 verse 52 thank you for all the sessions that you have led so far and the spirit of god is still moving and i want us to pay attention for samuel 17 royal are you able to read epos read verse 52 for samuel 17 52 and the men of israel and of judah rose and shouted and pursued the philistines from Jadal come to the valley and to the gates of the equa and the wounded of the philistines fell down by the way to sharon even unto gath and unto equa thank you I want to put us in remembrance that this is the year of the blast of a trumpet. 
and Jesus Christ has descended to liberate his children. And as we heard from Johannes' testimony, it's a liberation of the body of Christ to do the biddings of the Almighty God. A trumpet is a sign of the beginning of a season and the end of a season. A trumpet is a tool that brings confidence to a church to the intent that whatsoever they say, God is under obligation to perform it. Woe betide a people, a nation, a church that has no trumpet. No matter how powerful the strategy, the meetings, the bureaucracies, the plans, the program, the congresses might be, the board meeting. If a trumpet is lacking, it will just be a great colossal disaster as it happened to Joab and Adonijah. In all of their schemings, they had everything but the trumpet. How Joab forgot the trumpet, we don't know. Because Joab had used the trumpet earlier to antagonize Absalom and his trumpet. Suddenly, in this matter now, Joab forgot the trumpet and that became the possibility of his defeat. So since this year is the year of the blast of a trumpet for us, that's God's promise, we must find ourselves aligned to what he wants to do and when we and when we are aligned to his will we will see manifestations of his power in our lives from the scriptures that we have just read the bible says the men of israel and the men of judah arose they rose from where they were on the battlefield were they supposed to be sitting down they were on the battlefield were they supposed to be lying down so when you say somebody rise who is on the battlefield then he raises a question what is the person doing on the battlefield if he was not rising before, if you are standing physically, can somebody tell you to stand again? It's not possible because you are already standing. On the battlefield against Goliath, you can't be sitting because Goliath is not sitting. Goliath is always standing. How come the men of Israel were sitting, were sleeping, were hiding? When it, were in such a posture that cannot be described as upright, being, a, being, being in a position that can be described as rising, so much that when a miracle took place, the first description was that they rose. Then they shouted. Something needed to happen for them to rise. What was that? A trumpet was blown. It was the trumpet of the victory of David. But tonight, we we'll just had one more thing. What do we want to add? The Bible says the men of Israel and Judah, they arose. They arose from their cave of darkness. <laughs> because every time Goliath spoke, every time Goliath blew his own trumpet, these men had to go and hide for their lives. They were afraid to die. They were afraid of their destiny. They knew defeat is just but a few days away. They were afraid because they didn't know how to tackle the characteristics and the effects of Goliath's trumpet. They do not have a trumpet of their own to blow, to antagonize Goliath's trumpet. So the only thing they could do is to run backward and find a dark cave and hide daring. That is the reason why when a trumpet was blown, the very first thing was a miracle of liberation. And tonight, if there be anyone who has been hiding in a cave, Remember, he talked about the men of Israel. Do not categorically see us. Like Yohani said earlier, the Israel of that time was the church in the wilderness in Acts chapter 7. That is the church of today. So it's possible for the church of the living God to be in a cave. The cave of darkness. The cave of fear. The cave of intimidation. The cave of confusion. The cave of indecision. So those men, they were in the cave because they had no future. Goliath was a barrier, an intimidating wall against their progress. And they felt like there is nothing else to do but to hide in the cave. And because they were in the cave, their posture changed. They could only squat in the cave. They could only kneel in the cave. They could only lie prostrate in the cave. But you cannot win a battle with such kind of posture. You can't pursue an enemy by lying down. You can't pursue an enemy by lying prostrate on the ground. What happens? They need them to change their posture so that they can execute judgment over the enemies, over the wicked. They needed to change their posture so that light from heaven can shine on their path. But it has to do with the trumpet that they heard, with the victory they saw inside. Hence, tonight, and the Holy Ghost has observed 
that many people in the body of Christ have become used to a posture of frustration, lying down in defeat. This is how it has always been. This is how it will continue to be. We will just manage and endure it and live. Keep on going forward in the cave. Is that the will of God? Is that the plan of God? So tonight is a trumpet blast to produce light where there is darkness. Tonight is a blast of a trumpet to change our posture in the spirit realm. And I want you to get ready because the spirit of the living God will do what he has always done, what he knows how to do best. Genesis chapter 1. Royal Epos read again, verse 1 to 3. In the cave of life, in the darkness of life, there must be a solution. But that was not the first yeah. time it has ever happened. There was a cave of life at the very beginning of creation. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the faces of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Thank you. On the surface of the deep was darkness. The opposition to creation is darkness. The opposition to revival is darkness. And so the whole globe, the whole world was like a dark cave. Nothing happens. No creativity, no vegetation, no enterprise, no industry, no houses, nothing. It's just dark and dark and dark and you just have water because water does not need light. It's just there. And so there was uselessness. There was no productivity. When darkness covered the deep like a mighty king, then God had to declare forced a warfare against darkness. You see, it is possible for a church to exist without light. It is possible for a person to exist without light. It is possible for a Christian to exist without light under the umbrella of darkness. And the person will think that all is well until an enlightenment comes. Until the power of darkness is broken. We prove this from scriptures because tonight we are going to use the tool of a trumpet to first liberate ourselves. And then liberate our wall. Matthew chapter 4. You want to help us read. Matthew chapter 4. Help us read verse 15 and verse 16. Matthew 4, 15 and 16. Matthew 4, 15 and 16. Verse 15. Matthew 4. The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people of which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Thank you. These people were human beings with privileges, were human beings with responsibilities, they were human beings with obligations, they were human beings with occupation, they were human beings that were walking on the surface of the earth, they had all their duties, they had families, they had places, they had beautiful activities that makes them human. And the Bible says they were all in darkness. They were sitting, look at the position now, they were sitting in darkness. Not only that, the Bible says they were also sitting in the region of the shadow of death. That was their spiritual identity. But when you come with your physical eyes, you see a nice environment. You see wealth. You see beautiful houses. Nice fence. Nice vineyard. Nice grasses. Nice beautiful places to, to go to. Nice, nice tourist attraction. You see a lot of things. And if you do not have a spiritual eyes, you will say, oh, what a heaven on earth. You know, when you come around to certain countries in Europe, what do you see? The roads were tired. What do you see? Beautiful, well-arranged places. I say, what a nice place. But you know, when you have a spiritual eye, you will see beyond those physical arrangements. And then you will be able to speak. The people we sat in darkness, in the cave of life. The people that sat in darkness, the solution to their darkness. The solution to the posture is light. But light cannot come except somebody brings it. Light cannot come except it is ordered. God brought light to the darkness of civilization in Genesis chapter 1 by speaking it into existence. That is the power of a trumpet. God had a voice. 
He could have chosen to keep quiet, but he wanted life to come to the surface of the earth. And he had to bring light first before life comes. In everything you do, in every decision you make, if there is no life, it is because there is no light. <laughs> For every project you execute, for every plan you have in mind, if there is no life in it, it is because light is missing. And the Bible says, men of Zebulun and Laphtali, the Galilee of the Gentiles, they were sitting in darkness. They were sitting in the region of the shadow of death until light came, until light came tonight. We are going to blast before we move forward. We are going to blast our trumpets. And we are going to tell the Lord personally for you. And say, Lord, bring me out of my postures that I have accomplished, I have acquired in darkness. Bring me into your marvelous light. It is very important because the men of Israel were, were church in the Old Testament. But they were in the cave as a result of the circumstance of life. And now I want you to pray. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to call upon God. Because I will tell you something after that. We are going to pray and tell the Holy Ghost. Set me free from darkness. Bring me into your marvelous light. Bring my thinking pattern into your marvelous light. Bring my desires into your marvelous light. Bring me out of darkness. Change my posture. Lift up your voice and pray. If you are not distracted where you are, you can unmute yourself. I want us to create some cauldron of prayer tonight. Some intensity of prayer. Because this is fundamental to the heart of God. We cannot pursue an enemy me if we are sitting in darkness. We cannot have a future if we are sitting in darkness. There is no glory that comes in darkness. There is no life that comes in darkness. Begin to pray and say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, let your light shine. Bring me out of darkness into your marvelous light. Begin to lift up your voice and pray. It doesn't matter how many years that darkness had been existing, for, for, for even if it's for millions of years, it changes in a moment. Your posture changes in a moment. When a light is brought to you, when an enlightenment comes to you, when an understanding comes to you, your decision making changes, your plans changes. When something collides with that darkness, that darkness needs to give way because heaven has, has a plan for you. Lift up your voice and call upon God and say, Lord, my life, my life, my life must not, must not, must not end in this darkness. There must be a light for me. There must be a light for my life. I can continue to struggle in the darkness of life. There is a glory somewhere. There is a spirit of the living God somewhere. There is a move somewhere. People are entering into the marvelous light of God, but it is only predicated upon the sound of a trumpet. And we have brought a trumpet here tonight because those that sit in darkness, they must see a great light. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. There is a miracle tonight and we must enter into that experience. You must enter into that experience. We are going somewhere. There is a journey ahead of us. We are going somewhere. Every darkness of your life, anything Anything that you have observed, anything that makes you to take certain posture in life, anything, anything, kapapelo irigataya, erakaskata mundo padakaleketaya. We must break the siege of darkness. We must break the siege of darkness. We must break the siege of darkness. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. But I tell you, nothing works if there is darkness. Not in walks if there is darkness. If you have a long time of darkness, even your internet will fail. Your battery will fail. If there is darkness, you know nothing can happen. You have to find light by all means. But there is a church in darkness. There are people in darkness. There is a dark mentality. There is a way people approach things in life. But it is under the influence of darkness. Tonight is a night of liberation for the 
church of the living God, for the people of God, this light will shine to you. Those that sit in darkness, they must see a great light. This trumpet must set us free. This is a serious matter tonight, and I want you to take it very seriously. Everywhere you are, whether you are on the journey, whether you are in the house, whether you are on the street, pay attention to this matter. There is a darkness that the Holy Ghost has revealed, that the people of God should not be carrying everybody. There is a darkness that makes a lot of problems, a lot of, a lot of confusion, that brings a lot of challenges. There is a darkness that makes us to oppose our enemy. It's a darkness of intimidation, the fear of men, the darkness that has been inherited. Keep on praying, keep on praying. It is a very serious matter tonight. We are blasting the trumpet that brings life. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Uh, Dr. Linda, are you able to read? Help us read Isaiah chapter 60, chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Thank you very much. You see, uh, I hope that uh, we are not distracted, because... Tonight, the Holy Ghost will take us into a furnace and it will make something genuine. Do you understand? See, it's not by struggle, it's by grace. I speak as I see and I will tell you what I've seen. And then we'll come back to this scripture. I saw in the spirit, pay attention. I saw in the spirit a mighty hall, a great banquet hall, like a great conference hall. And I saw many Christians, many people, some of us who are here on this call tonight. I saw you there and I saw in the spirit that in that place there were it was built with lot of light lot of light but unfortunately people were there but they could not find the switch box to put on the light they tried every means every box every switch box they found could only bring out one tiny light almost like a candle circumference and everybody tried their possible best they looked for where the control switch will be for this great all to give us light after several trials no one could find where the socket is. No one could find where the switch box is. People were exhausted. People were tired. It now became a norm. Everyone feels like, well, it looks as if the hall is wonderful, but we have come to settle for the only tiny light that we can find here. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord showed up. And people were watching. And the angel of the Lord showed up in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the flesh of an individual. And then people were looking. And the angel asked, is this all you have? Is this all, la- all the light you can have? Everybody said, this is how it has been. We have found a way to be comfortable in this darkness. We have found a way to shift responsibility to only those who have some atmosphere of light. For example, if you want to read something where you are in that big hall, if the light does not get there, you will transfer what you want to read to somebody else. You say, please, help me read it. Me, I am listening. Look at that. When you, you are supposed to be reading, you are supposed to be an executor of his judgment, of his righteousness, an executor of his righteousness. But because the little light that, that gets to you can even barely make you to see your fingers. Oh, I hope anybody's, you are getting what I'm saying. <laughs> 
and that became a norm in that civilization and all these so-called christians were just there struggling until the angel came and then when the angel saw all their plight the angel saw their confusion the angel saw their malady the angel saw their disadvantage the angel saw their, their their struggles because they've been there for years and interestingly we saw families saw with children all still struggling in the darkness it was a pathetic situation, very pathetic, very pathetic. And 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 there were so many, um, how will I put it now? There were so many risky things that were done in the darkness. For example, they could not identify if they were eating food or if they were eating poison. They can't see what they were eating. They can't see what they were drinking. There was this susceptibility to anything that shows up, anything that comes. Danger was looming, but they were not aware. But all of a sudden, the angel came in. And when he saw the predicament of the people, went to the far right corner of the hall, went to a place nobody thought about, went to a place people never thought that switch was there. And as soon as he touched that switch, the whole hall came alive light everywhere the light that could blindfold there was no trace of darkness again and that community erupted into a massive revival and they say wow so this was possible so this was possible i saw it in the spirit and let me tell you that will be your solution tonight that will be your testimony tonight <laughs> by the time you are living here tonight the angel would have touched your switch box you will go out of this place with a great light. Let's look at that scripture we have read. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Look at that. If a light comes, it's an indication there was no light before. If the message, the command of the Almighty God to you is to arise. That means your posture was that you were lying down before. It means that you were, you were, you were sitting before. It means that you were not rising before. Because a man who is rising cannot be told to rise. Are you getting it? In the spirit realm, I see many of us are sitting down. Many of us are lying down. Lying down because there is no inner strength. Lying down because we are tired. We, are, we, we have come to settle for the years of struggle. We say, well, if your father did not achieve it, you also cannot achieve it. Who told you? Here is the scripture. He said, Arise, for your light has come. Do you really believe that this year is the year of the blast of a trumpet? I put it to you tonight. Anything I say that upon your life it will come to pass, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know, in that revelation, many people have already settled for the fact that it can never happen again. Light cannot happen again. We have tried, we have taught through the night but you know when jesus came when jesus came when jesus came possibility became possible impossibility became possible and the bible says arise for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you why because it is a contradiction when gross darkness also fills the people of god it is a contradiction when your decision making is clouded with darkness it is a contradiction when you cannot see further than just the circumference of your nose, just the circumference of your physical eye. When God has a mighty plan for you, the decisions you are making, the places you are going, the, 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 the agreement you are making, the, are you making it in darkness? Are you making it in darkness? The plans that you have now, ah, the plans that you have now, were you in darkness when you began the project? Then if that is the case, is that the right plan? Don't you think that glory cannot shine upon that? Because you made it in a posture that does not pertain to victory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And there is a problem. There is a problem. If you make a decision in darkness, if you make a decision in ignorance, as a result of just a tiny revelation, as a result of only a tiny illumination, what happens? The Gentiles cannot come to your light because you don't have light. The king cannot come to the brightness of your rising because they can't see. It. Tonight, the Holy Ghost will perform a miracle here. And you that have seen in the spirit, in that great awe, we have an encounter with light. I want you to open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, 
made it make tonight my own night of transmigration, of transfiguration from darkness into light. May this miracle not pass me by. I want you to lift up your voice and pray and say, Oh God, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Bring me out of gross darkness. Bring me into your light. Open your mouth and pray. Let the light of heaven come to me. Bring me in to change my posture. Lift up your voice and pray tonight. And I tell you, a miracle will begin to happen. For that angel we show up. 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 You have to be desperate tonight. That gross darkness cannot cover you. No, God has a plan for you. The glory of the Lord needs to shine upon you. The Gentiles need to come to the brightness of your rising. The King must come. There's something in your life must attract people. Something in your life must attract the Gentiles. You can't just continue to struggle like this. There is a plan of God for you. God has to break you out of this darkness. Arise and Shine. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Your light is coming tonight. By the trumpet of the Lord, I blast you into light. I blast you into light. I break the power of darkness over your life. Lift up your voice and pray, friends. Lift up your voice and pray, friends. Remember, we are talking about spiritual life. Remember, we are talking about your identity in the spirit. If you go on any journey of life without a glorious light following you, you are a recipe for disaster. Begin to tell the Lord, I want my atmosphere to be changed in the spirit realm because this trumpet must deliver light unto me. This is a serious matter, friend. This is a serious matter, friend. The light will shine. The way you think is a component of where you are. The way you think, the way you think, the way you think, the decisions you make, your imagination is, 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 is a component. It is proportional to the volume of light that you have. Your faithlessness, your unbelief, it is connected to the light that you have. And today is such a day to it was marvelous light and a miracle we have a miracle we have that sweet must be torn from Ah, papa, 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 Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray Emmanuel, help us Amen. read Osea chapter 13, verse 14. Osea chapter 13, verse 14. Understand that darkness has its own coordinates. It has its own localization. When you talk of a cave, you imagine darkness. There is something else that also constitutes darkness. And we read it a little bit in that Matthew, when the Bible talks about those that sit in the region of the shadow of death. Do you see that? Death and darkness, they work together. But let's look at what happens in Osea 13 verse 14. 
in Hosea 13, verse 14, says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be thy grief. Oh, grief, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be healed from my eye. Can you imagine God's judgment for everything that consolidates our darknesses? As long as there is a cave, there will be darkness. As long as there is grave, there will be darkness. As long as there is death, there will be darkness. Many do not understand the principle. When you shatter the cave, darkness disappears. Because darkness will be exposed to the sunlight and it can stand no chance. The next prayer tonight is this. Everything that is the source of your darkness, it can be transgenerational. Maybe the way you were brought up, what you saw in your environment, your culture, it might be a case running in your family. It might be a covenant period. It might be a fraternity with idol that have been set in motion 70 years, 150 years, in a lineage before you were born. That may be the cave or the grave that emits darkness around you. It may be the words of an individual. Maybe when you were young, maybe when you were in school, somebody just look at your face and tell you that you will never shine. That may be a cave that continually, continually releases around your life darkness. It may be that you made a decision in life, decision of where to go, where to live, where to travel, to, who to marry, and that became the cave that you negotiated with that has brought you into darkness. And you try to rise spiritually, but because it is the cave that you have signed an agreement with, that cave continues to emit darkness around your path. And you are asking, how will I be delivered? Here is the word of the Lord, and I will redeem you from the power of the grave. I will redeem you. I will redeem you. Redemption is possible because either you like it or not, the cave or the grave has power. Power to emit darkness. Power to, to cast an atmosphere of darkness over a people. Dark thoughts, dark imaginations, fears, anxiety, panic emerging from the cave, emerging from the grave. And you have become a slave to all the dictates of the grave and of the cave. But tonight is a night of redemption because God has a confrontation with your cave. God has a confrontation with your grave. And he promised. He said, I will become a play unto your grave. I will be their destruction. And I will not allow the grave and death to repent. Because in his mind, he wants to set his people free. Is there a cave around your life? that continue to decimate your progress. When you obtain a tiny candle light, the cave will say, how is that possible? And then the cave, by circumstance, will bring out something that blows away your tiny light. And then you go back to square one again. Are you like that? Are you represented here tonight? Begin to tell the Holy Ghost, I come against every cave of darkness against my life. I come against, I raise up, the standard yes. of the yes. Holy Ghost yes. against Bible. every cave oh. that has been erected against my life. Yes. Against yes. my life. Yes. And I want you to fight tonight. Yes. I want you to wage war tonight. Yes. We are not joking yes. here. Tonight we must be free because God said I will redeem you from the power of the grave. I will redeem you from the power of the grave. I will redeem you from the power of the grave. You will not go down the way your friends went down. You will not go down the way your parents went down. You will not go down the way everyone goes down. You are not going to be answerable to the power of the grave. Because tonight, redemption is possible. God will be the destruction to any grave of your life. Any grave of your life. Any spirit of death calling your name. God will be their destruction. I want to call upon Lord God, God tonight and say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? I want people that can pray because this is a serious matter. Men and women, you must come out of this cave by The Holy Ghost must drive you out of this cave. This cave cannot continue to dictate your life. You cannot continue to walk in this limitation. 
No, your light must come. Your light must come. Destruction, destruction of the cave, destruction of the grave. Everything that is praying to money oppression of that is over your life, over your thoughts, over your academics, over your finance, over your health. Anything that is shooting darkness to you, over your children, over everything that concerns you, everything keeping you in darkness. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Tonight is a night of liberation. Tonight is a night of freedom. This cave must break. This cave must break. Let the explosive power of the Almighty God shatter the grave. Shatter the grave. Shatter the grave. Shatter the grave. Come out of this grave. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Don't be tired. Every fall. Every power, every legality, every rule, every covenant that emits darkness over you, to carry the wave of darkness around you. Everywhere you go, there is this dark there is this shadow, there is this body, there is this fear, there is this appreciation, there is this unknown, uncertainty, all of these things around you that is making you matatata, paka, papa, paka. Don't be tired, don't be tired. We are pressing, we are pressing, we are pressing. Into a victory, into a victory lane. We are pressing, we are pressing, we are pressing. Ratakani meleke deka deba nakaria. This thing has been there for ages. Even some of you saw the manifestation in the dreams last night. Oh, but I come to announce to you that cave of that, that thing that blows to you ungodliness, ungodly thought, ungodly imagination, oppressive dreams, set bars of atakari. Everything that has negotiated that deal for you, everything that brings you bad dreams and nightmares, everything that projects into your life, any cave, anything that holds that structure must, must, be, must be devastated now, must be destroyed now from the very root. Everything that brings that thing to pass, everything that is a common wealth of the grave, that releases really darkness over you, that makes your leg to, en- to be entangled in a web, in a web of confusion, in a web of confusion, in a web of confusion. In a web of confusion. In Jesus' name we are praying. There's one scripture we are going to read before we go there. When we, I want us to pray. The Holy Ghost is telling me to pray for somebody. Well, I, I don't know anything about you. I, I, I don't know so much or, or, or I don't know anything as, as it pertains to this. And it is to pray against a cave or a grave that is released over your life. An atmosphere of darkness, an atmosphere of apprehension, an atmosphere of anxiety, an atmosphere of restlessness, an atmosphere of the unknown. A cave in your life. That has brought to you a situation that may cost you dearly in the future. For which, in your spirit, man, there is a voice there. But you are not sure. You are not sure. And we are going to pray for you. That individual is Ella. Well, I don't know anything about you. But I'm just speaking by the spirit. Do you understand? In the recording, we are going to delete this aspect. So, but Ella, are you available? We are going to pray. I want to tell everybody to pray particularly for Ella. I hope she's listening. We are going to pray for her. I, I think Ella is a lady. We are going to pray for her that every fratana ancestral cave that is spying, spying and peeping into her life 
into our future to negotiate for our a contract with darkness. We are going to pray tonight that that structure will be devastated and broken to pieces. In so much oh, yeah. that it will be impossible for darkness to be cast over our path, over our life, over our destiny. I want you to pray for her. That is what the Holy Ghost, that is the only name coming to me. So I want all everyone here, just hope or, not, or, or, or mute yourself and begin to pray for this sister and begin to I call upon God, God for her that every case, every case, every grave that exists just to cast darkness over her life, just to bring her into a place of sorrow, just to bring her into a place of apprehension, that by the power in the name of Jesus, let those caves be destroyed because she must be redeemed tonight from the power of the grave. Begin to pray now. Pray them pray for her. 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 Pray for her as if you are praying for yourself. Because that cave is very, very hostile to everything that constitutes light. That cave is very hostile to everything that constitutes progress. That cave is very hostile to everything that constitutes enlargement, expansion. Wherever, wherever that cave is on the surface of the earth, God has a promise in us. I will redeem you from the power of the great. Allah, the Lord is from the power of this king, from the power of this grace, whosoever produced, whosoever pronounced it, whether you were born into it, whatsoever it may be, please pray, please pray, we are wrestling tonight, we are wrestling tonight, this our sister must be free from the king, makes you to listen to me at the expense of the spirit of God. The key that gives you a direction when it is not the right one. The key that produces an alternative against the will of God for your life. The cave that misdirects your path. The cave that draws a parallel line against the will of God for your life. That power that came is here by broken to the That power that came is here by broken to the end. That cost the anyone who has a look should be not to have cost the as a result we have from because remember the sun is the day. I speak against every Every spirit of God, every spirit of grief, every spirit of anxiety, Jehovah, today she sent you in the name of the Father. You have not given us a spirit of care, but of wholeness, love, and a sound mind. Everywhere you give her a sound mind, in the name of Jesus, you will take control of every aspect of her life. You will take control of every aspect of her life. I declare the Lordship of Jesus over her life. Rasta, 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 according to the promise, she had the sound of 
Thank you very much. Let's go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Roya Epos read verse 28. John 5 28. John 5 28. Right. John 5 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in thee which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Thank you. Don't marvel at the manifestation of the Holy Ghost tonight, okay? Because the hour has come. <laughs> well, literally, this scripture is talking about Jesus in his resurrection, but that is what it is in its context. But the Holy Ghost is using that scripture for us as it applies to us tonight. Marvel not at this hour. Don't be surprised because I tell you the angel has come to put on the switch and anywhere there is darkness no matter how far away you are geographically it does not matter because in the spirit there is no distance there is no distance at all in the spirit realm. there's no distance so I will speak as the Holy Ghost unveils things to me we are going to the far but the Holy Ghost is saying I want all of you to pray for Roya huh? that's what the Holy Ghost is saying now <laughs> the spirit of God is here we are going to pray for Roya the same prayer we pray for Ella huh? we are going to pray for Roya huh? Oh, 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 even though I know a few things, but don't don't think it is because of what I know, because I didn't think about it. I just the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray for Roya that the K that he was born with, he was born into the K that he himself has been fighting literally for several decades. Tonight, that cave will collapse. Tonight, that the power of resurrection will collide with that cave that you are afraid of. And all of its manifestations, you know, because you have seen it in the life of your siblings, the manifestation of the same cave. 
And every time in life, the cave roars at you, thinking to overwhelm you, and then you stretch yourself and you cry, oh Lord, I don't want this to happen to me. And it's that kind of game for years. Tonight, I launch you into victory. Now, I want you to begin to pray for him and say, God, every cave this man has been dealing with for ages. <laughs> Tonight is the end of the cave. Lift up your voice and pray for him. For Roya. We are praying for Roya. Uh -huh. A miracle must happen here tonight. And you will hear the sound of war. You will hear the noise of victory. That cave has been fighting for years. That cave, I don't want to mention the details, but that cave you have been dealing with for ages. Judgment has come tonight. Marvel Lord, because it is your hour. Because it is your hour. It is your hour. It is your hour. It is your hour. Tamanta Kadimana di Makara, the Kaleva Kapato Maharias, Elilisa, that gave the component of that gave from the very from the very from the very every structure that has kept that gave everything that has reinforced that gave everything that has made that gave unbelievable, everything that has made that gave impossible to every. Everything <laughs> in Jesus name we are praying in Jesus name we are praying we are still praying for him in Jesus name we pray thank you we are still praying for Roya listen carefully by the spirit of God I saw in the spirit 
not only the cave, but there is also an officer that is guiding the cave, that the cave must not be broken. That officer is a woman. And the woman is so powerful. And her assignment was to keep the cave from being shattered. But you know, it is just like Jesus Christ. He was to rise from the dead, but they closed the cave or the grave or the tomb with a bridgestone and they put some soldiers there. You see, when the angels arrived, the very first thing that happened to those soldiers was to fall down as, a, as dead people. That's the first thing. And then he rolled away the stone. We want to annihilate that personality <laughs> in the spirit because there is there is something about familiar spirit. If they continue to exist, even though God delivers you from a cave, they will create a scenario by which you will enter into a new cave. Do you understand? Every time Israel fight the Philistines, the Philistines will come again because they are familiar. They are familiar. At some point, when the Israelites are even harvesting, when all the soldiers have gone to farm, the Philistines will come again. Imagine, people are in the farm and the Philistines have come. It is always, they're always catching people unawares. And there is a personality like that about this brother that is just there to observe, to monitor, to ensure that if you escape this cave, I will prepare a second one for you. And that is, and that informs certain decisions that you make, certain plans, certain projects, certain people that crosses your path, certain ideas you respond to, certain suggestions somebody makes that you have never seen before or known before. And the person sells an idea to you and you just follow it. And then somebody calls you and say, why did you do that? You say, I don't know. I thought it was a good idea. It is because in the spirit, there's a personality that ensures that you're always in the cave 24-7. We are going to pray today that as it pertains to this brother, let that ministration of that familiar spirit be over. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost pronounce judgment over that personality that oversees a cave syndrome. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. That yoke must break. 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 That you said the most part. That soldier, the enemy has planted there. We are always watching for your altar. Your family, your family, your family. Always watching for your altar. Even though they are physically far away from you, they can tell stories about your life because they are always so close. In the spirit, they know everything you are doing. Tonight is such a night. Liberation must come to you. In the France, must come to you. Mama Tatek, the Papa Padalika, the Santa Tata Bite, the Tikabi, 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 that woman must be dissociated from your life. That familiar spirit, that familiar instinct, that transponder, whatsoever radar she has to monitor your life will be shut out tonight. In the name of the Lord, that which has end, that knows how to invoke your spirit, that knows how to monitor you. Jesus, <laughs> 
and the Holy Ghost is not giving me the person's name, but somebody is here, and you are saying in your heart, let him mention my case. Well, I don't know you, so who are you? Somebody is saying somewhere amongst you, saying, let him mention my case. Who is that person? The Holy Ghost is not giving me your name, so that's why I'm saying it like this. So who is that individual? Who wants to be prayed for now? Shade, it's you. Okay. Now, we are going to pray for Shade. I don't know what her prayer request. But you see, it's just to tell you that the Holy Ghost is here. I, I don't do things of my own. It is only what he tells me I do. It doesn't tell me anything. We just study the scripture and go home. Now, we are going to pray for Shade. We are going to pray for her. I don't know what the request is. But it's still the same line of prayer. Okay? Now, when the Holy Ghost gives me something, I will say it. But before that, I will say this. Whatsoever is pulling like a weight in the cave, you know, that is making her uncomfortable, uncomfortable. When somebody is in the cave, you don't stretch there because you only take the volume that the cave made possible for you. In your room, you can stretch. In your room, you can jump up because your ceiling is high. You can do what you like. It is your room. You can open your window because it is accessible. In the cave, there is no window. So you, if you want to crack that, crack a window out of the cave, you have to think of the tools and what it will cost you. It is not easily accessible. So in other words, there is what we call, something we call pain. Pain of of inflexibility, pain of things just tightening around you. You are not, you can only walk in the, in the volume or the circumference or the radius that the cave only allows for you. And that is not you in your heart of heart. You know that you are bigger than this space. Are you getting it? <laughs> Ah, we are going to pray for Shade tonight. Any case that has determined our jurisdiction, <laughs> any case that has given her dimensions that God did not give to her, any case, either in the spirit or in the physical, anything that gives her checkpoints, here to fall and no further. When the Holy Ghost says, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Everything that boxes her into a corner, everything that challenges uh, a devotion that makes it to look like she's holier than thou when she simply wants to pursue God with all of her heart. <laughs> Whatsoever the structure of that thing might be, tonight I put it to you, that cave will be evacuated. And I want you to begin to pray for this sister right now that the Holy Ghost will break and enlarge our coast. The Holy Ghost will break these barriers. The Holy Ghost will root it out. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. In the spirit, in the physical. In the spirit, in the physical. In the spirit, in the physical. In the physical. Materially. Everything that has brought her into a place of confinement. A solitary confinement. Everything that has caged alive. Everything Everything, everything that has measured this span for our life and say, Well, you can lie down here, but not you can face the direction, but not this direction. Anything that is trying to enter our flexibility, our expansion, our glory, our righteousness, our fulfillment in the kingdom of God, our be used for the kingdom of God. Begin to pray and tell the Holy Ghost and tell the Holy Ghost. Let that cave be broken down. Let that cave be broken down. Let that cave be broken down. the excavator of the Holy Ghost. Power must change. Arise, O Lord. Power must change. Power must change. We are in a business of water. Ratatande Hale Horoko Bodi. Rasalaina. Rain and the Navana. Aranda and the Navanga. Arasala. This thing that has pulled this geographical limitation, this thing that has pulled the spiritual limitation, I say here to fall, but no further. And then you are trying to be flexible, you are trying to expand, but there is this, there is this component. There is this interest around. 
Roto de Marekai, Rias and Maraca Kakolika Payam, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray. Please pray, please pray, please pray. Don't be tired of praying. Yerisa la wata kuri makalika kake. God must enlarge the frontiers. God must enlarge the frontiers. God must enlarge the frontiers. Emasande kaleka raka papa ni malaka. Who is he that commanded? Who is he that speak it and it, and, and it comes to pass when God has not commanded it? Who is that cave that has given you a destiny when God did not command it? Who is he that has made you so inflexible when God did not command it? How have you come into that cave? Whatsoever the cave represents, whatsoever the cave represents, everything that does not make you to prosper, everything that reduces your worth in the kingdom, anything that in that's you in the place of prayer. Everything that in that's your fruitfulness in the kingdom of God. You want to expand, you want to be fruitful, but for whatever reason, Rata Kanti Manina Nade Neke Demo and then another Makaka Kuru Mokokole Batea, Zeza Asia, Mumu Neba Teka Neba, Rana La 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 O man ta kapi ka papa ne ko ne malaki rasa kate ne bali ka rasa dari ka kaye raka ka ka salo rasa kate nae ade ne ne masa ka do ka 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 pa ye pa ka te ne bali ka raha so ta na ta ne 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 de ke ri ka kaye maru ka ka pa ko ka pa ye ne balu ko ro ko ko ye sa ne ka ri ka kaye ba te na ra ti ne na na ye ne na na zali na 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 zali 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 I stretch you out of that cage I break the wall. Oh the barrier, but the power we have in the name of Jesus, I command the grave to hear my voice. I command the cave to hear my voice, and I command the never take up a ring. The liberty of the Lord Jesus, 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 the liberty of the Lord Jesus. Ring and the command of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Uh, we will hear your testimony. Um, somebody sent in a chat, Davis. Well, the only ghost has not told me anything, so what is it? Davis, right? Davis. I've been seeing myself struggling with so many things that I've been putting my hands on. So many things I've been praying about it. I've been struggling with so many things. Some things I've put my hands on. So, business, other things, some other things I really can't see what I'm doing. So, I just want to help you to do that. I've been praying about it too. No problem. Are you a child of God? Do you know Jesus? You are born again. Yes, sir. Good. So we are going to pray for him. Whatsoever constitutes, everybody are going to pray. Whatsoever constitutes that limitation. Whatsoever brings darkness over his plans. Whatsoever produces losses. Whatsoever produces... <laughs> Ah, the Holy Ghost is speaking. Who do you tell your plan? Yes. Who knows your agenda? Who do you speak to? That is the case. There is a personality so close to you. But you can never know in the physical realm because the person is very responsible. But in the spirit, is your nightmare. Who is that individual? We are going to pray tonight. <laughs> That number one, may God open Dave's eyes that he may see. Huh? <laughs> ah, that he may see, that he may see, that he may see. When he has seen, then his actions will be different. Do you understand? So that is the solution to your own problem. But we are going to pray for him and say, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes that he may see. Because where light comes to you, the cave can no longer survive. Because the substrate of the cave, the reason why the cave exists is because of your ignorance. Huh? <laughs> Lift up your voice and pray as the Holy Ghost leads. But well, that is the story. <laughs> begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. I say, Holy Ghost, open the eyes of our brother. Lift up your voice. I don't, I'm not hearing anybody pray. Don't be tired of praying. We will soon round up. Begin to pray for him and say, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes. Let his eyes be open. 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 That he may see. That he may see. That he may see. As you may see, he supposed not to be the one that is solidifying a cave around his life. He's supposed not to be the one providing the cement for a cave against his own life. Begin to pray for him that that individual who is responsible in the physical realm but in the spirit is a nightmare. May the Holy Ghost open his eyes that he may see. May the Holy Ghost open his eyes that he may see. May the Holy Ghost open his eyes that he may see. There is a companion. There is a person. There is a business partner. There is an individual. 
individual. I don't want to go into details. But he himself needs to have an encounter where God opens his eye and says, This is where this is where the cave comes from. And by the time you recognize that cave, that cave can no longer survive because Satan always tries to manifest in darkness. The Bible says he does not like light at all because his demons are evil. He likes darkness. He likes darkness. And wherever there is light, wherever there is enlightenment, Satan cannot stand. And I tell you, this problem cannot stand. Why? Because enlightenment will come to you. Understanding will come to you. The Holy Ghost will point your eyes to that direction. You will be able to see clearly. You will be able to identify this situation. You bari mama bateke baby adi moro bakali bata ere kaka di bele yera mama iye dada la karama soto moko raska libeteria kaka dani ande na mata kadi karima kaka lega varu koko moro raske de bele kabara raska tavali moro koko kavali mete ne bele kaka ye father take away the scale take away the scale and bring him into a place where he can see bring him into a place where he can see he will not be the one sponsoring the cave against his own life. He will not be the one providing the cement to be cast around his life. He will not be the one helping the enemy to fight against him. Man takati la kaparo kakaya. Make him wise. 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 Take away the ignorance in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. We will round up now. But let's, that scripture we read, John 5, 28. We are going to pray with that. The Bible says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. All, all is all, all is all. Only one voice, the voice of Jesus. But everyone in the grave, no one sparing. God spares no one. Everyone in the grave, we hear the trumpet, we hear his voice. That is the power of the voice of God. Everyone in the grave. So if your case is not mentioned, and your name is not mentioned, don't worry. This scripture covers everything. That everyone in a cave-like situation, anyone in a grave-like situation, anyone with that identity, that voice of the Lord will come directly to you. And the Lord will give you a sign. He will give you a sign. Because your hour is today. Your hour has come. We are going to pray and I want you to pray. And say, Lord, I hear your voice. And I come out of my grave. I hear your voice. Don't begin to talk like that. You don't need to pray so much. Don't begin to say, Lord, I hear your voice. And I come out of your grave. Of my grave. I come out of my cave. I hear your voice. I come out of my cave. I come out of my cave today. I come out of my cave today. This very hour. Hour, I hear your then voice, I come and I come out of my cave. I hear your voice, and I come out of my cave. And I tell you, in the spirit, you are discharged. You are discharged and acquitted. Because uh, your words create an atmosphere. 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 In the spirit, in the spirit, you hear the voice of God and you come out of the grave. You hear the voice of God and you come out of the grave. You hear the voice of God and you come out of your cave. I'm telling you the truth. The miracle is happening now. I hear you. I hear the voice of God and I come out of my cave. I hear the voice of God and I come out of my cave. I hear the voice of God and I come out of my cave. I hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Royal Epos read Ezekiel 37 verse 12 and verse 13 because the Holy Ghost is telling me to prophesy. But before I do that, I have to prophesy from the scripture first. Ezekiel 37, verse, verse 12 and verse 13. And this is what is going to happen. This is what is going to happen. Right. Ezekiel uh, 37, 12 and 13. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thou saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out and come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. 
You shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. 14. And don't, worry, shall... don't read 14. Uh, 14 is my okay. assignment. I will deliver right. 14 unto you. Right. Verse okay. 12 and 13. Do you see how many times graves was mentioned? God began by saying, Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, O my people. Can you imagine God's people in the grave? How is that possible? God's people with graves? How is that possible? That is the reason why only few people shine. Brightness is not available. The kings don't see us anymore. The church of the living God is no longer a place where the king will come in the night and say, I know God is within you. Pray for me. The king's wife is sick in the hospital. Look at that. Look at that. This is what has been the calamity of our generation. The church has become a graveyard full of sick clothes. We, are, we have now taken a new office. We, our office now is the office of embalming the dead. We are now professors of embalming the dead, preparing the dead body. Instead of us crushing graves everywhere we go, liberating people from graveyards. Some of us have become tailors that sew grave clothes. We have become furniture makers that make coffee. In the spirit, in the spirit. Just follow the mind of the spirit tonight. <laughs> he said, dear four professor, and I will speak as I'm commanded. Something will follow you home tonight. <laughs> we will hear your story. We will hear your story. Either you like it or not, a king will find you out because something will begin to shine out of your life that is irresist irresistible. 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 Your name will be mentioned in palaces. <laughs> Except the only ghost did not call me. <laughs> ah, you will see a sign. 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 Well, when that day comes, you will know the Lord has spoken concerning you. <laughs> Mark this day down. Mark this day down in your diary because you came out of your grave today. <laughs> He said, prophesy and say unto them, thus says the Lord God, because God cannot create a people for the grave. It's a misnomer. It's a misnomer. Why should he create people when they will end up in the grave? Their destiny in the grave, their joy in the grave, their peace in the grave, their health in the grave, carrying grave clothes everywhere. You come to the church full of dead men's bones, grave everywhere. Grave Christian life, grave prayer life, grave understanding of the scripture, grave evangelistic life. Everything is dead. Everything is comatose. What kind of life is that? Financial wise, grave. Struggling everywhere. Every time when the Bible says the abundance of the Gentiles shall be converted unto you, what is going on? And the world is mocking and say, it is better for us to go and serve Satan because Satan is more wealthy than the people of God. The Bible says, and God bless Abraham in all things. Riches is not his, as long as it's used for the kingdom of God. For some of you, for some of you, it's just a matter of time. You will become a tycoon <laughs> for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the kingdom. When that day comes, don't put all the money in your pocket. Understand it is for the kingdom. Because you came out of your grave tonight. <laughs> ah, I speak as I'm commanded. The Bible says, Behold, all my people, I will open your grave. You know, when a grave is closed, you know what that implies? That is darkness 24-7. That is permanent darkness. You, you close a grave. Have you ever seen somebody put in a bulb and a fluorescent lamp inside a grave? What for? Is it for the dead bones to go and buy food in the store? You no, know, there are things that are not needed inside the grave. Light is an aberration in the grave. But light is a characteristics of God. God dwells in light. And so grave is is an antagonistic phenomena against the true God. For that reason, wherever God sees a grave, he's angry. His nature is angry against graves because grave cannot repeat darkness. And God says here, behold, I will open your grave. When a grave is open, what happens? Light drives away darkness. First, not only that. And now we cause you to come up out of that grave. So people were there in the grave. Can you imagine that? In the spirit realm. That's what Jesus said. Behold, in the land of Naphtali and Zebulon, the people that sat in darkness, they they were going to store, they were going to school, they were going to university, they were getting married, but they were in darkness. They were sitting in the region of the shadow of death, but they were walking, they were walking, they were going to the gym. But in the spirit, it's just graveyard everywhere. But when Jesus came, they saw a light. That means their grave was open. That your grave will be open tonight. As I speak to you, God Himself will perform the miracle. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how far you are from where I am. The Bible says, and I will bring you into the land of Israel because there is a commonwealth of promise for you. There is a covenant of hope for you. There is a place that flows with meek and honey. There is 
is a place of liberty. There is a place of liberation. There is a place of fruitfulness. There is a place of the blessings of God abundantly. And God is saying, I will bring you. Look at what he's going to do. He begins by decapitating the grave. Rending the grave headless and gateless. He collides with the obstruction at the grave. And then he brings us out by power. And then he sends us forth. Do you see that? He sends us forth as a banner that the grave no longer exists. Concerning your life, I prophesy to you, as it pertains to you, grave no longer exists. As it pertains to you, as it pertains to you, grave yeah. will no longer exist. Grave experience, grave encounters, grave encounters, grave encounters. You, 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 you. Recently, you saw yourself close to a grave. For you, that is the end of that story. It will never appear again. <laughs> and the Bible says, And ye shall know that I am the Lord. See, there is going to be a proof that God is here tonight. If that proof does not come, that means we are just joking. Huh? But I know God cannot lie. He brought us here for a purpose. He brought us here for a purpose. It is the year of the blast of a trumpet. And you too, you will know that God is your God. When he has brought you, when he has brought you, when he has opened your grave. Oh, my people, and brought you up out of your grave. That is going to be your portion. I mean, here is the prophecy. <laughs> that now, by the Spirit of God, I prophesy that the Spirit of God will enter into you in a new dimension. The spirit that hates the grave. The spirit that does not negotiate with the grave. The spirit that does not, how will I put it now, settle, settle for grave-like stories, grave-like experiences. Something in God that hates the grave, may that thing enter into you now. In the name of Jesus. And whenever Amen. you see signs of the grave, whenever you see climates of graves, whenever you hear discussions around grave, there's going to be a roar in your spirit, man. And you will command that grave to shut down. In the name Amen. of Jesus, may the spirit Amen. of the Lord enter into you from this day forward. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will live and not die to declare the counsel of God. Whatsoever you lay your hands upon from this moment shall prosper. And Amen. the scripture tells us... And I will place you in your own land. The Lord will place you in your own land. Your own yeah. land. You, no one will be able to contend that space with you. He will create a real bot for your life. Even the enemy yeah. will come and be jealous of what God has done for you. Why people yeah. are talking of racism? You will be shining as a light that cannot be shut down. Even the white and the black will come and prostrate to your God because they've never seen it in this fashion. May this yeah. be your portion oh, in the name of God. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For high the Lord spoken it and I the Lord with it for me. Say amen. Give him thanks. Amen. Give him thanks. Glory give him thanks. God. Give him thanks. Thank give, him thanks. Thank give him thanks. Thank and then Lord. after that Lord. Emmanuel Lord. and Yohani round up the prayer for him. Give him thanks. Praise him. 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 Thank you, Lord, because Christ for Thank you for this presence. Thank you for the grief. The power of the grief is broken. Thank Jesus. from to show us from the to the the green to the sky. We are going to sing that song again, but you know what happens? Jesus Christ is the head of the church. 
the body cannot be having a different experience from the air. Mm -hmm. So if he passed through the grave to the sky and is seated on the right hand of God as our head, where should the body be? In the sky as well. You see that? We are leaving this place with that reality. We are no longer in the grave. He came from heaven to from the head my he came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross. Our death, Jesus paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. It will Amen. Amen. Emmanuel, pray for us and then Johanny. Father, we thank you so much. Spirit of God, we bless you for this fellowship. We thank you because you have done something in our life. Something that all eyes we see. And today we mark the beginning of a new course. Father, we give you all the glory. We thank you for destroying the power of the grief. We thank you for ushering us out of our key. And Lord, to give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the vessels you have used tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, because we are going back into our world and to leave a mark, the footprints that generations we see and we we give you the praise. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Receive all the glory, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you for this evening. Thank you. Have you moved in so many ways during this evening? We give you all the glory and praise. Thank you for the things that you spoke. Thank you that from just like we gave you glory and praise, thanksgiving before this evening started, for the things that you were going to do, we give you already praise, glory, and thanksgiving for these things that you have spoken. We, for we can consider them as done because we shall see the manifestation. Father, thank you. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. in the name of Jesus. Amen.